everybody. <laughs> Hi. What's shaking? What's shaking? Jesse, you wanted to go for it? Um, oh, no, I forgot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Not a problem. Okay. Hi, everybody. So I was a little bit distracted there for uh, a minute. Hello. Ha Happy Hello. Friday. I get to see all your smiling faces. <laughs> Yay. Let's see. Kathy, do we have all the, the roles yes. filled? Okay. Yes, Fantas we do. Fantastic. Just a one quick announcement. When the meeting ends today, I'll, I'll just stick around. So if anybody has any questions or if you guys just want to chit chat or anything, I'll just hang out for a little bit because I, I, just want to be accessible and if anybody wants to hang hang out afterwards that's that's fine too and i am going to, i'm super 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 excited because kathy is kathy is this your first time being toastmaster yes <laughs> yes yay <laughs> yay and like we said there's always a first time for everything right yep 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 all right so let's welcome our Madam Toastmaster, Kathy. Thank you very much. Um, am I supposed to say what our mission is or just? Usually the Sergeant at Arms says that and we can do it next time, but okay. well, you can just go right ahead and. Okay, thank you, uh, Dina. Um, I am going to introduce the theme, which is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is an important uh, date because it is a positive and secular holiday. When we celebrate gratitude, um, something I think we do not do enough of these days with all the COVIDs happening. It's also a celebration of the fall harvest. The celebration began with the pilgrims who in 1621 called it their first Thanksgiving. So I welcome everybody today to this meeting. And the word of the day is per, uh, per, persevere. Persevere means persistent, continue, carry on, keep going, hammer away. Now I would like to introduce the roles and who is filling each of them. There is the awe counter, which is Lucille, the grammarian, which is Paul, timer, Deanna, general evaluator is Jesse, watcher is Megan. And we have a toast mat, a joke master. And I apologize, I don't know that we have one, do we? Mm. Yes, we do. Angelus. Who? Yeah, it's Angelus. me, Angelus. Angelus, okay. Well, I'm also a ballot counter. Okay. And then we have two, the first speaker is Myra and the second speaker is Anita. So I'd like to uh, introduce our first speaker, Myra, who will talk about what snowboarding has taught her or me. And the evaluator is Pat. Welcome Myra. Hello everyone. So excuse me while I try to share my screen. I've created a presentation for you. Hopefully this works. Can everyone see it? It's good? Okay. Yes. So then I'll begin. So today I'll be talking about what snowboarding has taught me. Uh, everybody knows that there are benefits to snowboarding, things like it's good exercise, you're outdoors, getting plenty of sunlight, it's like a moving meditation, you're connecting with nature, so many good things. But what a person gets from each experience is going to depend on that individual. And for me, I actually have picked up a lot from snowboarding, and I've been able to connect some of those things to real life. And so I wanted to share some of those insights with you today. I'll be talking about three of my favorite lessons that I've learned from snowboarding. So the first one is look where you wanna go. If you've ever taken a lesson, you probably heard some version of this because it's really important to snowboarding. 
The saying goes, don't look down. If your eyes fall to the ground, then so will you. And when I first heard this, I thought, wow, this is so interesting because I feel as though I'm fighting all of my natural instincts by not looking down. I just instinctively want to scan the floor and make sure that there isn't anything directly in front of me that's gonna cause my fall. See, I realize that us as humans, uh, we tend to subconsciously and unwillingly focus on the negative in order to prevent making mistakes that are gonna lead us to pain. However, where attention goes, energy flows. And so I decided to just let go and try this out. And what I found was actually pretty cool because my, I realized that my body just naturally knew what to do and how to move in order to get me to where I wanted to go. All I needed to do was focus, trust myself and lean into it. And what I found was, is that I actually had what it took all along and that was a beautiful thing. So applying this to real life, I began to shift my focus from the things that I don't want in my life to only the things that I do want. And that has made such a huge difference because it's allowed me to manifest my reality today. So the next that it's all about balance. And so a lot of us have heard that the key to life is balance. And when it comes to snowboarding, most people think that that's just finding the middle ground between toe side and heel side. And while physical balance is important to snowboarding, it's not the only time that it's used. There's also riding within your expertise and also pushing the limits. If you're not finding that line and pushing the limits, and that means that you're not challenging yourself and you're not growing as an athlete. There's also discipline versus having fun. So when you start setting goals for yourself, it can get so easy to get wrapped up in, you know, just achieving that goal. And sometimes you're just like, I have to hit this jump. I have to hit this jump that you forget that you're supposed to be having fun, which is probably the whole reason why you went out there in the first place. The funny thing about balance also is that when most people think of it, they think of about the scales and, you know, it's distributing equal weight to balance each other out. And that might work 50-50 for a straightaway, but what about when you're going downhill and approaching a turn? Snowboarders need to be able to ad adapt to the changing terrain in a moment's notice. And sometimes when you're approaching a, a, a turn, you're not able to see that far out ahead, much like life. And balance in that moment may look more like 70-30 or 10, depending on the turn. And trust me, if you aren't able to adapt and, and adapt to the changing balance in time, you'll know it because you'll be on the floor. And I think that this is just so appropriate for life because a lot of times finding balance is one of the most challenging things, especially when it comes to changing life circumstances and then also adapting to your own personal preferences as well as your tolerance. So whenever things kind of seem a little off, I always try to remind myself to just reassess that balance in my life. And the last one is going to be that the greatest lessons come from the gnarliest falls. So most people have heard that failure is the key to success, and that's very true, but it's easier said than done, especially when you're facing broken ribs and concussions and things like that, all of which I've had, but failure really is crucial to progress. And I think the sooner you can come to terms with that, the sooner you'll start making progress. This really is one of those sports where you have to set your ego aside. And when it comes to failure, your attitude is gonna play a huge role. For me, I've found that laughing it off tends to go a long way. So research suggests that there is a link between emotional response and memory. So it basically means that the more impactful something is for you, the more likely you are to remember it. And I think that that's just a fabulous adaptive trait that we have as humans that ends up helping us out quite a bit. And for snowboarding, it basically means the harder you wipe out, the more likely you are to remember, hey, don't do that thing that caused you to fall in the first place. And then that's when you start to realize that pain and success kind of go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other, sometimes much like it is in life as well. So in conclusion, the things that I've learned most about from snowboarding that have helped me out in life have been, look where you wanna go, Remember to balance and remember that failures are only lessons in disguise. Thank you.
Thank you, Myra. Now we'll take a moment to put your evaluations in the chat box to Myra. And if you want to send it to her via email, if Myra, if you would put your email in there in the chat box. Thank you. Is everybody okay now? Is everybody ready to go to the next step? How about 15 more seconds? Okay. So now I would like to introduce the second speaker who is Anita. And Anita's topic is conflict resolution. And her evaluator is Brooke. So let's welcome Anita. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, everybody. Conflict resolution. I hate arguing. Uh, fighting and disagreeing. And if I can, I'll just go the other way. I avoid conflict and I avoid disagreements. And I never thought about uh, conflict though before or resolution, how to, how to resolve it. And I found out that conflict resolution actually is a genre that students study it for years and even elite colleges offer advanced degrees in conflict and dispute resolution. But why? Why is it so important? Why, uh, why is everybody so interested in it? Well, the truth is we all know that conflict is a part of our life every day. It's just a natural part of our life because think about it. Anytime two people or more come together, everybody has different experiences, different perspectives and different opinions. And we're bound to eventually uh, disagree and have discord. Businesses really understand this. Some businesses spend millions of dollars on training and mediation, and they understand that conflict in the business world can be disruptive and it can even lead to uh, frustration, uh, disconnect, and even sometimes aggression. But many companies also realize that with conflict resolution, if it's facilitated correctly, it can be a positive. It can add to understanding and team building and maybe even new and creative ideas. It can be a very powerful and positive. So there are so many theories and um, ways to do things and dialogues about conflict resolution. One of the um, most accepted is the Thomas Kilman model. And what they do is they break uh, conflict resolution down into five simple strategies. There's accord, avoidance, domination, compromise, and collaboration. Now, I already talked about avoidance. I was kind of surprised to hear that I already had a strategy. And most of us don't like conflict. And most of us, over 50% of us, avoidance is our first uh, strategy, but it can, it can actually grow the conflict. It can make it stronger unless you absolutely do not care. 
Now, a, um, accommodation is a great strategy if you don't care what the outcome of the conflict is. You just tell the other person, just go ahead and do it your way. But accommodation can be very powerful if you, if it moves into a give and take situation. You take what you want this time, I'll take what I want next time. And it can be a very good strategy to use. Now the experts say, stay away from the third strategy. And that is the strategy of domination. That strategy um, they say to stay away from because people don't like to be told what to do. And, it, and that is when somebody says, we're not gonna even discuss it. This is what we're going to do. And you can see why that one is the one to stay away from. Although in some respects, in some situations, it can be the one that you need to use. Now, compromise is the strategy that I think is used the most. In that one, everybody has some input, everybody gains something, but everybody leaves something on the table. And compromise can be a very good strategy. But the experts say, if you can, go into collaboration because that strategy is the win-win. Everybody uh, participates in finding a solution. And the solution uh, is accepted by everyone. Now, these five strategies, they're just the very basic foundation of um, conflict resolution. And um, there are many, many, many other parts to, um, to this study. There's communication and um, uh, uh, location and empathy. And do you understand the perspective of the other person, the relationship of the people in conflict, things like that. So I challenge you in conclusion, I challenge you to the next time that there's a conflict, think about it. Think about the two goals of conflict resolution. Try to find a strategy that not only uh, settles the conflict, but also will turn it into a good positive conclusion. Because how great is that? If we can actually turn something negative and something that we hate into a great positive energy and change its course into something that's good and, and motivating and worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Now, if everybody will put your comments to Anita. And if need, if you want to take your email, you can send your email to everybody. Okay, everybody, I'd like to have a timers report for Myra. Deanna. Okay, uh, Myra uh, did it in five minutes and 42 seconds and Anita five minutes and 47 seconds. Both very close, both qualified. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to introduce uh, Pat to do the evaluator. He's the evaluator for Myra. 
Welcome, Pat. Thanks, Kathy. All right, Myra. Uh, I was very impressed by your speech. There was a lot of good points and uh, I liked how you made it a lesson, kind of a metaphor for life about snowboarding. It was very meaningful. Yeah, your preparation was, was awesome. Your delivery manner, you were confident, you're direct, uh, very earnest. There was the good transitions, how you just went from the three lessons, the, uh, you know, balance, look where you want to go and um, learn from your failures. So it was a, a good conclusion too about, you know, learning from your failures was positive. Your posture was very good. Facial expressions, you were good eye contact, you were, you know, very alert and in, into the camera. A uh, good, good Zoom uh, ensemble. <laughs> um, uh, so the language was very good too. I like the, the, some of the phrases were, where attention goes, energy flows, uh, failures or lessons in disguise. That was very nice. There was a, really a lot. Um, the PowerPoint was very powerful. And uh, the only thing I would uh, recommend was more vocal variety. Sometimes you can, it could be more enthusiastic, like I was snowboarding or something like that. But overall, great lesson about taking risks. And thank you. Thank you, Pat. Now I'd like to introduce a Brooke, who is the evaluator for Anita. Welcome, Brooke. Hi, hi everyone. Well, first of all, great job, um, Anita. I really thought that um, you know you definitely grabbed my attention at the beginning. You, the whole you know the whole topic of conflict resolution, very relatable as I hate conflicts and arguing. So I definitely learned a lot. It was. Um, very interesting and very educational and a lesson for myself. Um, you gave some, you know, you it flowed very smoothly onto the different strategies that you gave us um, and how to, and good examples of how to overcome. Um, also some great theories. You mentioned Thomas Kilman and, you know, you gave some percentages. I, um, I, you had great eye contact the whole way through um, and also great posture. I like how you challenged us at the end to, um, you know, you got us thinking about goals and how we can better ourselves. Um, it was great, positive energy, very motivating. I didn't see many hand gestures. So maybe, I don't know, put some gestures in there next time. But overall, it was a great informative speech. Thank you. Thank you, Brooke. I, I want to apologize because I think I was supposed to announce for everybody to vote for their best speaker first. Is that correct? So I think before we had the evaluator. So if we want to, before I introduce Jesse as the. Uh, so, Kathy, um, we're going to try oh. the poll. Okay, option. so okay. it'll all the voting will happen at the end. Okay, super. Okay, well then I would love. Thank you very much. I would like to introduce uh, Jesse as the general evaluator. So welcome, Jesse. Thank you. Great job, everyone. Um, and I first want to start with the evaluators. Uh, Pat gave a great uh, evaluation for um, our first speaker who was My Myra. And Pat, you went into talking about all her transitions, which was great. And then her delivery manner, which was very true and helpful. And you leaned on what her positives were, which were many and that she had great eye contact, which I also noticed. And she had a very natural way speaking manner 
which was um, fantastic. You um, gave it a sample at the end that she could perhaps bring in a few more gestures, I, I think. And that would have been my one suggestion uh, as well, that if you don't have quite as much time on the handout, then we can see you a little bit more, um, Myra, and you can work on your hand gestures and just have that full camera on, on you. But for today, that was fantastic using the PowerPoint. And then I'll move right over into um, um, uh, uh, Anita and, or Brooke talking, giving an evaluation for Anita. That was really good too. Uh, nice to see you on camera and nice evaluation. And again, you talked about some of the most important points of eye contact and posture that she was doing really great. And again, um, Anita will be working on hopefully bringing in a few gestures. And those are, you know, it's like adding props as to an actor. You learn how to, to add, which I'm not even doing right now, adding in gestures. But overall, fantastic job, both our speakers and our evaluators. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. So could I get a timer's report for the evaluators? Both are qualified. Okay, thank you. Now I'd like to introduce our table topper master, Greg. So Greg, welcome. Thank you. Word of the day is persevere. We'll accept perseverance. We all need it this time of year. And since we're approaching the holiday season, I like to, the thing that I'm the very most happy about is that Kathy and I, my wife Kathy that is, still like each other. We will have our 29th anniversary on Monday and we still like each other, even though we're penned up here together. We still never run out of things to talk about. How great is that? So my question is, what is it that you're most happy about right this minute now, Devin? Thank you, Greg. What am I most happy about right now? I think I would have to pick my baby niece, Sadie. Mm. Um, the pandemic has made us it difficult because they live in Rhode Island. So they're very far away from us. She's not even two yet. And so there was some of that, you know, we had to persevere through not being able to travel and keeping our distance for the safety of the whole family, even though that's not what we truly wanted to do. We wanted to be there in person with her. But I'm very, very happy and grateful for this technology that we have. Um, you know, I was very concerned that she wouldn't know us. And I, that made me really sad that we live on opposite coasts and she wouldn't know who we were. But my sister has been really great. We have a weekly call, sometimes even more than once. But we always, every Saturday, the whole family gets on Zoom. And now she knows all of our names. She asks to talk to us. She's just whip smart. She's a delight to chat with every week. Mm -hmm. And it just makes me happy every time she says Aunt Devin. It just fills my heart with joy. Mm. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I've been going out to happy hour every day almost for 50 years. I go whether I drink or not. If when I'm not drinking, I drink Diet Coke. But I just like to go out get away from any distractions at home, from, from the phone. I don't even carry a cell phone. So my question to you is, what do you do to get away from the daily pressures? Let's see, Lucio. Thank you for that question, Greg. We are persevering and like you and Kathy, Rick and I are still friends and still like to work with each other. And uh, so that makes being locked down really 
important and make it easy with all this pandemic issues that we have to get away from being just indoor. I often would go out just in the backyard, just take a five minutes, a little bit of sun, could walk around in all or, or we also walked around the golf course, which is very nearby us, it's walking distance. So we would go do that uh, once a week, but we do an indoor exercise via Zoom, via video, Ooh. because we our gym here is closed. Um, so we don't have any more. So we try to do an outdoor exercise or an indoor exercise, walk around or jog around or stuff like that. So that's that's how we stay fit and healthy. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Oh, I should mention that when we go out to happy hour, we're always outside and we're always socially distanced. And Kathy even slaps her mask on when the, when the server comes around. So we're pretty darn careful there. We love to talk and we talk all the time. We've had a number of times people come up to us and say, are you married? And we go, yeah. And they go, we never knew anyone who talked like you do after they were married. But we still do, and it's it's great. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember what the question was going to be. <laughs> oh yes, what would you? What would people find surprising about your relationship with your spouse, or someone close to you, or your pet, Deanna? Okay. I got to time myself. Something that would be surprising. Okay. I have to confess. For the last two months, we haven't been sleeping in the same bed. <laughs> and that's because I've had back issues and I've had to basically play musical beds. And I've been trying to find a bed that I'm most comfortable with for my back. And I have a favorite. And the favorite is a twin futon. So it's just myself. And it's a really inexpensive IKEA fold up bed. And my partner that I do have some evenings is this dog that we're, that we're dog sitting for my husband's niece. And she jumps on the bed. So I get to snuggle with her right now. Thanks. Thank you. Next question is, how would you spend your ideal day? Paul. Thank you, Greg. I'm not sure how I'm going to persevere through all this madness. My ideal day is definitely not doing what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Day in lockdown. I see sunshine out there. It's kind of a nice day. I guess I could go out for a walk, but can't go to a restaurant unless you get takeout and eat it on the curb or something like that. That's not too fun. It's a little bit of a bummer. So persevere is probably the thing of the day. So if I had my druthers, which I hopefully will have after this vaccine kicks in, God willing, in about six months or so, uh, it would definitely be, I like outdoors. I guess I could garden when I could do that anytime. I like going places with the kids. So whether we're playing outside or we're going to like Disneyland or SeaWorld or something like that, that would be my ideal once this lockdown's over. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I don't, I don't ever remember being bored. I don't know. I like my own company, I guess. So I would like to, my next question is, what do you do when there's nothing to do? And Angelus. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> so one thing that I, I mean, I like to do anything basically, but before the lockdown, I like talking to people all the time, <laughs> no matter where I was at the grocery store or anywhere, basically. And um, I can't really do that. I mean, I can, but I try not to. <laughs> like compliment people or tell them anything. I have noticed lately that there's been this thing going around that um, 
people could come to your house and ask you, I don't know, for something. And I had someone come to my house earlier today. And he said if he if uh, I could give him my flip flops and he would give me a, um, a peppermint, mint, peppermint milkshake from Chick-fil-A. So um, if you guys see anyone going around and asking for your flip flops and giving you a peppermint milkshake, don't don't listen to them. <laughs> OK, thank you. Now, finally, something to do with Thanksgiving. What is the funniest thing that ever happened during a Thanksgiving weekend? If you can't think of anything, make something up. Megan. Oh. You're, you're muted, Megan. Okay, from what I remember when I lived in Atlanta was bringing a live turkey to my grandmom's house. It was, I have like 30, 30 cousins. Uh, my grandmom had nine children, so it's a huge, big, whenever we have Thanksgiving and um, this will be our first Thanksgiving without her. So I guess we can't bring the live turkey to grandmom's house. Of course we didn't. We chopped the, we killed the turkey, of course, before, you know, we ate them. But it was, it was a wonderful. I mean, we didn't name the turkey because you know, of all the younger cousins that were there, you know, that you don't name a turkey and then chop them up and eat them. So that is, we, now that my grandma of 103 just passed away two months ago. So we persevered through this, Thanksgiving. This will be our first Thanksgiving without all getting together in North Carolina. But due to the pandemic, I wouldn't be able to go to North Carolina. So I, I'm just going to have to persevere and have it at home. But I'll be with my baby, Tommy. Thanks. Greg, are you on? Are you? You're muted, Greg. Greg, unmute yourself. Okay. What recent memory makes you smile the most, Angel? Hi, Greg. Um, a recent memory that makes me smile. In general, it's the dog because he always makes me smile. The cats make me laugh with derision, but the dog makes me smile in a sort of a joyful way. Um, but actually, since I really, really miss going to restaurants, seeing you makes me remember the last time I saw you and Kathy. And that makes me smile that we went and had a great meal and a lot of laughs and hang out for a little bit. And that's the kind of thing I've been missing the most. So I think, although I will be persevering and I'll persevere as best I can. And my mother always said that you should persevere. I'm dying to go out and uh, do a little bit more socializing because I'm really sick of my own cooking. That's what makes me smile. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. Let's see, I guess I got time for at least one more. What is your favorite food? Tell us what it was the very first time you ate it. Jerry Tettleman. My favorite food. Well, I guess, uh, you know, when I, when I first came to California, I came from Cleveland, Ohio, and I had never eaten really Mexican food before. And I had never had uh, guacamole. 
and I, I was a vegetarian. I ordered some guacamole tacos and I was like, this is incredible. It was, it was just amazing, you know, to eat. And I had refried beans and I was like, I never had that before. And I never had avocado when I was growing up. It just wasn't something we ate. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was really impressive. You know, I think avocados and guacamole and refried beans and Mexican food in general, it just really is something I really enjoy and something that I never experienced uh, growing up. So I would say I persevere and I love living in San Diego. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Who doesn't? Yeah, this is not the truth. Let's see who I'm gonna to, who I'm gonna pick on next here. Um, what is your least favorite food? And tell us about what it was like the first time you ate it. Uh, Brooke. Hi, Greg. Um, oh wow, you put me on the spot. What do I not like? Um I, what? This is really hard because I usually like a lot of food. <laughs> um, you make it up, make it up a story. Doesn't have to make be true. up a story. Okay, well, I do remember um, when I was living in North Carolina and I was moving from North Carolina to come over to California and we were traveling across the country and we stopped in. Um, New Orleans and Louisiana and they're really known for their um, catfish so you know we decided to try some catfish which um, I did not like um, but my my ex-husband likes but I tried to persevere and try it and eat it anyway. <laughs> catfish that's surprising that's my last question that does it for me thank you everybody. Thank you very much, Greg, and thank you everybody for those wonderful stories. So I'd like to get a timer's report on the grammarian report for the word of the day. For the timer's report, it looks like everybody, everybody made it. Megan was 146, so she was one second past past being disqualified and yeah so that's it okay and then the grammarian report on the word of the day is paul i think i heard everybody use it unless somebody said that they didn't say it I didn't, I didn't say it. Okay. I missed that one, but I think everyone else used it from my notes. Thank you, Paul. So I would like to call for reports. Lucille, the awe counter. Thank you, Kathy. You almost did not have any, but then you just said so, just now. So one so for Kathy. Myra, your favorite is the word so. You've got more than five there. Anita's, you've got more than five in ah. Uh. You have four ums, one so, one and, and one repeat. Pat, you've got, you like ahs and ums. So you've got three and three there. Brooke, you, your favorite is um, so you've got more than 10. You have one so and and. I would like to say that I try to make sure that I don't put down ands all the time because sometimes you use it in the good context. So I'm very particular with the and, so I often do not just mark you. Greg, one so, Devin, one so, one and. I forgot to with myself. Deanna, one, so, one, and. Paul, one, ah. Angelus, two, ahs. Three, ums. Two, so's. One, but. And three, and. Megan, you kind of have one on each one of each category. 
<laughs> one or two in each category. Angel, I caught one so for you. Jesse, you've got three ahs, five ums, and three and. Gary, two ahs, two so's, two and, one like, one two you knows, and one repeats. That's my report for today. Thank you, Lucille. I would like to ask Paul for the grammarian report. Sure, we had some really fun words today. So I like toe side and heel side from Myra. Myra also used the word on her slide, gnarliest. That's a fun word, gnarly. That's like an 80s word almost. Anita, I like the words conflict resolution and empathy. That was a word that we've been hearing a lot is empathy. Pat, I love the word earnest. I actually heard it. I probably use it, but I had to look it up and it was resulting from or showing sincere and intense conviction. I just thought it was a cool word, earnest. Brooke, you reminded me to have my posture much straighter than it is because I like to slouch and I just got to get that posture. And just, I love flip flops for milkshakes. I mean, that's, that just sets the bar right there. Megan, the live turkey story was awesome. Angel used the word derision. Wow, that's a cool word. I have to look that one up after this one. Jerry, guacamole tacos. Might want to go get some right now. And then broke the last word. I love cat. Actually, catfish was really, never tried it. Maybe, maybe I'll go do it now. Sounds good. Thank you, Paul. I love catfish also. I'd like to get a watcher's report from Megan. Megan, probably have to unmute yourself. I'm sorry. Everyone really knows how to dress nice and be present, be presentable, professional in front of the camera. And so far, I just have uh, Angel. It was just you were kind of foggy, and I I don't know that might be my camera, but uh, the video. But it was just a little foggy. And um, Paul, as you know, to sit up or whatever, how someone said that before, and just to sit up and have a little posture. But I don't, everyone was standing, everyone was standing, I mean, everyone was sitting up straight and in the camera. It was a good picture, and everyone did a great job. Um, that's it. I guess. Thank you, Megan, for that report. And I'd like to invite Jesse to give a general evaluator report. Jesse. I felt I, I already gave it. But if I want to give a general evaluator report over the whole meeting, um, I could do that too. Um, and I thought everything went real smoothly. We were prepared and everything fell into place. Great um, table topics, topics, especially at this time of year. And you, Kathy, did a great job. And I liked your intro talking about Thanksgiving and what a great season it is. And I know that everybody's really ready to take a, that one week vacation we have coming up. So we'll see you all in two weeks. Thanks. Thank you, Jesse. So now I would like to turn it, uh, present the awards, I guess, and I turn it over to the president. Or do I announce it? Forgive me. Uh, do you have the winners? You can, you can, you can announce it. That'd be fine. I don't have. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Devin, Devin, I'm oh, sorry, Devin. Do you want me to just read them off? From the poll? Yeah, that'd be fine. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. We're, we're testing new technology, everybody. All right. So best speaker goes to Myra. Congratulations, Myra. Our best evaluator of the day is Brooke. Congratulations, Brooke. And table topics goes to Angelus with a hilarious story. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. And I'm going to turn the meeting over to Deanna, the president. I think I'm done. Kathy, did you want to did you want to have Angelus do her joke? Oh, yes, Angelus. Yes, please do your joke. I apologize. Thank you. Oh, it's okay. I have two things. The first. Oh, hey, everybody. I'm sorry. Everybody oh. unmute yourself yeah. for the for the joke master. Yeah. <laughs> I have two things. So the first one is I found funny that um, my boss actually, when he sees people buying turkeys at the grocery store, he's like, oh, that turkey's too big in a, for a social distance Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> and the second joke is why did the turkey cross the road? Because he wants people to think he's a chicken. Oh. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much you. for those jokes. And now I'll turn the meeting over to the president, Deanna. All Great. right. That was a fantastic meeting. First time, Kathy, as Toastmaster. Brooke, first time as being an evaluator. Way to go, you guys. Just jumping in and just trying different things. And that's the only way we're going to learn is to just go for it. So let's... Take a quick picture for our VP of uh, PR. And uh, Devin, would you mind taking a screenshot? Okay. On the count of one, two, Toastmaster. Okay. All right. And I am going to, let's see, let's do our, um, let me share my screen. And I love your background, I, Deanna. I have my background. I love it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. thanks. That's the standard comes with Zoom thing. All right. So Anita, is this uh, project one level three? Am I correct? Sorry, I was muted. Yes, it was Fan project number one of level three. Fantastic. All right. All right. And? And Deanna? Uh, yes? I want to say, tell Devin that I thought that the poll was great because I could never remember, like, who are all the people that uh, made, who did table topic. You're, you're right. That was the first time for us yeah. doing a poll. Right. So Good job, Devin. Yep. Yeah. Do you guys want to do that again next time? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. And then Myra, this is her second speech. Woohoo! 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 <laughs> All right. And then let me go to next two weeks from today. And Yikes. we've got Next week is Thanksgiving weekend, sorry, not meeting. So the first week of December. And Myra, I just wanted to ask you a quick question because your, your second part of, or, uh, of your project, you do, the, you do your, your speech and then you have to do an evaluation. So for, for the following meeting, did you want to be a, an evaluator instead of an odd counter to fulfill that project? I can't hear you. Uh, are... Just so that's before your other speech, that's why. Oh, I'm supposed to be an evaluator before my Yeah. Second? Oh, yeah. well then. Sorry, Deanna, I want to ask, did, did Myra finish her second speech for level, for project two, like apply? Is this her second speech for level, for project two, level one? So today is her first of two. So the first one, and then she gets, and then she, and then she applies the evaluation she gets today yeah. to the next evaluation. Right. So on level, on project two level one, there's A and B. So this is her B. This is yeah. her. This is A. This okay. is A. So she needs to do B. So she is, needs to be, and then be an, and then be an evaluator. Correct. Yeah. Right. So oh, project, okay. project two level one. 
as A, and then B, she applies on the B, the second speech, she applies what, what the evaluator suggested to her on the second speech. And okay, it, then it could be the uh -huh. same speech or it could it could be a different speech for B for part. Okay. And then the third one is to be an evaluator. Okay. Okay, got it. All right. I got it. I got it confused. So I thought she had to do the evaluate be evaluator first. But okay. So Myra, sorry, confused. <clears throat> I'm confused. You can be evaluator anytime after December eleventh. So let me backtrack. And for next week, this, uh, the next time we get together, December the 4th, who wants to be table topics master? And we've got two evaluator spots open and all this others. I'll be something, whatever you need. Okay, Anita? Mm -hmm. Oh, put you at table topics master. <laughs> Thank you. I can be general evaluator. Um, thank you, Pat. So I'll, I'll um, let's see. That's my icebreaker for my second pass for next week. Yes, fantastic. So I'm doing. You're the first person to do a. No, Devin. Oh, a minute. Devin, Devin was. Devin was. See, Devin is ahead of me. I'm trying to compete with her. <laughs> <laughs> Keep her on her toes, Devin. <laughs> Okay, so we need two evaluators, a timer, joke master, I'll, and I'll be an evaluator, I guess. Okay, is that you, Megan? Yep. Thank you. I'll be a joke master, Kathy. Kathy, thank you, Kathy. Is this is Brooke's icebreaker? Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I, I can be an evaluator, Deanna. Oh, is that you, Paul? No, it's Jerry. Jerry, thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Awesome. Right. Timer and a watcher. I don't I'll think we a, can. I be a watcher it. also. Can I be a watcher also? Kathy. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Timer. I can be timer. Angelus, thank Angelus. you. Angelus, yeah. And I don't, I don't know if we're going to need a chat monitor or ballot counter. What do you not guys think? Not if we're using the poll. Yeah, not if we're going to use the poll. Okay. All right. Um, did anybody have any announcements? Oh, from the, um, the last, co the last conference thing, I just wrote down for um, what we need to do for our competition, what each speaker needs to do, and how if you're in the, I don't know, I have just written down um, that I saw for personal, two personal people. Um, think of what works for you, did something well. Oh, if you did something well before the lockdown, keep it up. And many of these meetings will continue on Zoom. Um, and it's good if, um, whoever, whomever is the chess master, if they make their background somewhat sort of related to the theme of the day that that was that was a suggestion thank you what, what meg is mentioning is that this last tuesday uh some there was an advanced uh, officers training and so some of the tips that they gave uh, those are some good examples of things that we list that we heard and also the polling was something else that we picked up too. And uh, December is the end of our, fir of our term of being an officer. Because my term goes from July 1st to December 31st, as well as you know, everybody in the officers right now. So starting January 1st to June 30th is our next term. So what I wanna open up is if any of you guys want to run for a position, run for the board or the office, 
please let me know and we can put you down. We'll probably have voting sometime in December. I haven't figured out the date yet. But by all means, we welcome anybody that wants to participate and be an officer. Um, Lucille, did you want to add anything to that? No, we um, oh, Kevin? This would recommend that the president, the VPE, the VPM, and the PPR stays for the whole year. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're right. Second term is this because it is a very. It's not that others are not important, but it it gives stability to to the club and to have the same for the because we are a semi annual election for our club. That's how our chartered policies um, protocol. So six months is normally the term. But we always encourage in our in our club. We always encourage to have the four, the top four, to continue to the second term, if as much as possible. It's not a requirement. We like to recommend it, and I'd like to strongly recommend it. <laughs> Thanks, Lucio. And I, I'm very fortunate. Uh, a lot of our of our officers in those positions, and a lot of our officers this term has volunteered to run again. And so I'm very grateful for you guys continuing your services. Uh, but those of you who are also interested in upping up your skills, please let me know because we are looking for folks the following term as well. So maybe not coming January may not be a good time, but you're interested in the next one. Please let me know because we want to at least start grooming you, so to speak. I need to add some more. Yeah. Okay. You got it. When there are an office, when there is an officer training, it is for the officer for us to get the club uh, credit, but it's also open to anybody. If you are interested in, in being an officer next cycle, it's good to attend those officers training just to get an idea what it's all about. Even though we, your, your office, the clubs here, the members, we help you how to be in that role, you know, like if you want to be a president next term, there's always Deanna will mentor you to for that for the following cycle and so on and so forth. But, okay, that's good to know. I didn't know that. I didn't know anybody could attend if they had an interest. But we just have officers get the credit for the club. Only oh, the I see. Gotcha. Okay. We, but anybody. Can attend. Okay. All right. Uh, and one last shout out. I want to say Awesome job, Greg, doing table topics. I think this is the first time I've seen you do table topics in a really, really, really long time. I don't know when the last time. So thank you for doing that. That was awesome. Thank okay, uh, if, if anybody has any questions, I'll stick around. But uh, we are officially concluded. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. I just